Okay, in this video, we're going to be writing a vector as a linear combination of two other vectors. So this is a 2D example. Um, if you're working on three dimensions, it's the same idea. You just need three vectors. Um, so let's see what we know. So first of all, if A is not equal to K times B, which means that the vectors A and B are not parallel to each other, they're not scalar multiples, then all two-dimensional vectors can be written as linear combinations of A and B. So that's kind of a, a strange idea, but it's true. Um, and what it means is that any vector C could be written as T times A plus V times B, where T and V are scalars. And what happens when we try to work on these problems is that we'll actually end up from this, because we're in two dimensions, we're gonna end up with a two by two system and the variables in the system are gonna be t and v. So let's take a look at an example. So we might have something like um, a is gonna be negative three, five, and b is gonna be eight, four, and then c that we want uh, a linear combination of a and b to give us one and two. So c is the vector one, two. And you can tell right away by looking at a and b, they're not scalar multiples of each other because um, a has one negative and one positive component and B has two positive components, so there's no way. Or you can do eight divided by negative three does not equal four divided by five. Um, there are a lot of ways to show they're not scalar multiples of each other, but they're definitely not. So let's uh, set up our equation. So the equation we wanna deal with is this, right? We want C to equal T times A plus V times B. And then we're gonna try to find T and V. So substituting in, we get this and it should equal one, two. Uh, on the left-hand side, I'm gonna distribute into the vectors. So I'm gonna distribute the T in and then the V. So I'll end up with, so this is scalar multiplication. Um, so I end up with this. And then I'm gonna keep cleaning up the left-hand side. Uh, once you've done a couple of these, you pretty much skip all of these steps. But uh, so it's, uh, I'm gonna add corresponding components. So I end up with a vector negative 3t plus 8v, and then uh, 5t plus 4v. And then this still equals 1, 2. And if two vectors are equal, then their corresponding components are equal. So that gives me two equations. So um, the first component should be equal, gives me this equation, negative 3t plus 8v is equal to 1. And then uh, their second component should be equal. So this equals this which gives me a second equation. So 5t plus 4v is equal to two. And now what I wanna do is solve this uh, by really whatever method you want. I actually like to use uh, Kramer's rule, but not a lot of, well, not everyone knows that, so I'm gonna solve it by elimination instead. So I look at this, uh, if I multiply that bottom equation by negative two, I can just add them together. It'll eliminate v. So that gives me negative 13t and then uh, one minus four is negative three. And then divide through. So now I know t is gonna be three over 13. Uh, now I need to figure out what v is, so I'm gonna actually substitute into the top equation, I think. So negative three, the quantity three over 13, plus eight v is one. And uh, if you just do the arithmetic on this, you end up with v is 11 over 52. But what did we just do? Well, we were trying to write C as a linear combination of A and B. So we have A, B, and C there. So what we're saying is that if I do 3 thirteenths A plus 11 50 seconds B, it's actually gonna add up to the vector C, the vector one, two. Um, and you can check that by actually uh, doing the arithmetic on it. But what I wanna do is a more general problem. So it's the same idea but a little different. So what we're gonna do this time is find a general formula for T and V so that we could write any vector with components X and Y, so any two dimensional vector, as a linear combination of A and B. So it's the same idea. So we're still looking at this equation. So T times A plus V times B. This time we want it to equal X, Y, so not specific values, but in general. So I'm gonna kind of jump to what most people do when they solve this. So I'm just gonna first look at all the first components, distribute the T, distribute the V, and then set it equal to, in this case, X. So I'll get this first equation, which looks almost identical to the first equation I got last time. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing with the second component of each vector to give me this equation. And now I need to solve this. So again, uh, I would just use Kramer's rule for the most part, but I'm going to solve this instead by combinations. And it's just a little weird because you get x's and y's in your answer, but not a problem. So multiply the bottom equation by negative 2 and then add them will give me negative 13t is x minus 2y. And that's OK. Um, I'm going to basically what I'm going to do here is multiply by negative 1, which makes the right hand side 2y minus x and then divide by 13. So I get 2y minus x over 13. That's a general formula for what t is going to be equal to. So now I need to solve for v. So I could do that by substitution, but that looks like it's going to be terrible. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to rewrite the system. And then I'm going to use elimination again, but this time I'm going to eliminate t instead of eliminating v. So to do that, um, I'm just going to multiply the top equation by 5 and the bottom equation by 3. That'll make the coefficient of t in both equations negative 15, and they'll cancel. So let's do that. So 5 times the top, and then 3 times the bottom. So that gives me uh, the t's cancel. I get 40v plus 12v. Um, so that's going to give me 52v, and then 5x plus 3y. So it's not really that bad if you do it this way. Substitution is kind of a lot harder on this particular problem. And so v is going to be equal to 5x plus 3y all over 52. So that's actually the answer to this. So any vector x, y that I um, have, if I want to write it as a linear combination of a and b, I now know how to figure out what t and v will be. So the coefficient of a and the coefficient, um, or the scalar for a and the scalar for b. So for example, if we go back to that first problem where our vector was 1, 2, that was what we wanted them to add up to. Let's just use these formulas and see if we get the same thing. So t is going to end up uh, 2 times 2 minus 1 over 13, which means 3 over 13, which is definitely what we got. And v is going to end up 5 times 1 plus 3 times 2 all over 52. If you work that out, you get 11 over 52, which is exactly what we got. So these formulas are working. Um, all right, so that's the general idea. It also works in three dimensions if you have three vectors that are not scalar multiples of each other. Um, but we're not doing that right now. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.